Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So far in our previous videos in Azure DevOps, we have learned about source control management with Azure DevOps Git repositories, continuous integration configuration with classic pipeline and YAML based pipeline, continuous deployment with the YAML based pipeline. We've also learned about the multi-stage deployment configuration, which we have configured in our last video. Now, today we will discuss about the agent pools. We'll learn what is agent pool and what are the different type of agent pools available. How do we configure the agent pools and what are the different limitations or the restrictions available with agent pool? Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi and you're watching Be Your Learner. Now, if you look at this pipeline, which we have configured in our last video, this has a three stage pipeline wherein we are building the application component, deploying the application component, and then we are destroying the application component after our deployment is succeeded. That's one of the scenario which we may want to configure. Every stages which we are running in our pipeline, each stage runs a particular job and each job might have one or more steps to run. The different steps which we configure in our jobs are runs under a particular machine. So those machines call the agent job. So the question is what is agent job? So agent jobs are the machines or the virtual machines available with Azure to run your workload or your application deployment workload with Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps as a service provides you this built-in machine configuration so that you can use that as machine configuration for your automation or for your for your continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines. To understand what I'm saying here, if you can see here, this particular job which I expanded here for the existing pipeline this is using a Azure pipeline pool. So this is a pool which is available. I'll show in a moment where you can find the pool. But this particular job is running from this particular pool. And from this pool, we have a machine image which is of type Ubuntu Lattice. And this particular Ubuntu Lattice machine is running all my job steps. So any step which we are which we have configured to run this pipeline, these are running inside this particular virtual machine, which is of type Ubuntu Lattice. We do have other options like Windows and Mac OS as well. So if you would like, we can change the configuration to use that particular image configuration as well. Each job could have their own set of agent pool configuration, or you could have a same agent pool configuration for any of your jobs. So it's up to you. How do you want to configure your pipeline? But you have the option to configure your agent pool configuration for your pipelines. Now let's look at what, where do you define or where those agent pool configurations are available. So if you go to the project settings right here from this particular settings icon, click here. Here under the settings, you'll find the pipelines menu and under the pipelines menu, we do have the agent pools as it the name suggests a pool is a collection of different machine so it could have various machines configured as the agent pool and when you use a pool it can take any available machine and perform your job execution from that machine which is available inside the pool you can add a new pool right here from this add pool button the same setting can be available right here at the organization level as well. So this particular pool setting is basically linked from the project to the organization. So any pool, let's say if I'm going to add it here, let's call it as a new pool called the sample pool, for example. This pool I'm creating here on my DevOps project. Project name is DevOps. And if I create it, then this particular pool will be available under my organization as well. So if I go to the organization settings, under the organization settings, 
you would have the pipelines and then a agent pool and you can see that the sample pool is available similarly if i add a new pool right here as the self-hosted pool let's say test it will be available here on my devops project as well as you can see so it is vice versa available whether you add it here at the project level or you can add it over the organization level you can manage the security of the pool as you want to restrict now with that pool at the moment you can see that there are no agents available so we have just the pool but there are no agents available so to configure the agent you can run a new agent button and then you will have the list of steps which you might want to require to configure it as an agent for example you need to download this particular software run unzip that particular software run it on the machine which you want to make as an agent pool and then that machine becomes the agent of this particular pool now these kind of a configurations are called the self-hosted agent pool because we are configuring the agent pools our own so we are making the agents under the agent pool by our own so that is called the self-hosted agent but we do have some other type of agent pools as well, as well for example we do have the agent pool provided from microsoft azure devops which is called the microsoft hosted agents and that you can find it here under the azure pipeline so the name of the agent pool is azure pipeline or the default pipeline so basically default pipeline is derived from the azure pipeline so if i open this azure pipeline for example you will see that the number of agents at the moment as i am using the free option or the free tier for my azure devops project i just have one hosted agent which is online so it is sitting sitting idle right now and then whenever i run the pipeline using this particular agent pool this agent pool has been picked up by my pipeline and all the jobs which are being executed under the this particular agent will be shown can be shown here which i can anytime go ahead and refer the details of the execution so just to repeat we have two different type of pool a self-hosted agent pool which we can configure onto a virtual machine and then we have a microsoft hosted agent pool which is given by microsoft azure and you can use those agent pool up to certain capacity if you are using the free version of azure devops but if you have a paid license for the azure devops then there are number of agent pools i think five or six of the agent pools which are available with the licensed version of the azure devops which you can use for the unlimited time so for example if you have a project which has let's say 10 to 12 different ci cd pipelines then these pipelines can be served by the microsoft hosted agents and you won't find any issues but let's say if you have hundreds of pipelines for example i had a project wherein i have 120 different pipelines uh, which we are supposed to run and we have a team of 200 developers or the tester who used to deploy the code every 10 minutes or so then having only five and six agents uh, were not sufficient enough so what we did we requested microsoft to increase the capacity obviously you have to pay for the additional pools or the additional number of pools but you can anytime create a request with microsoft azure to grow the number of instances for these agent pools you can grow it up to let's say 25 30 as many as number you want obviously you have to pay for those amount which we are which you are requesting so that's another thing now as i mentioned that we have a microsoft hosted agent and we are currently using the free tier so as you can see here with free tier you can use up to 1800 minutes per month and after that you won't be able to use the microsoft agent anymore so what you can do is you can create a virtual machine and then within that virtual machine 
on premise machine or azure virtual machine you can create the or configure your self hosted agent in that machine and for that self hosted machine you don't need to pay anything it's free of cost obviously you have to pay for the machine which you are running but if you have a machine then there is no problem configuring the number of self hosted agents so you can configure the self hosted mach uh, agents not not only to the machines but you can configure the self hosted agent as in docker image you can configure it as the kubernetes we'll look into some of the demonstration about how do you configure the agent pool into the machine or into the kubernetes azure kubernetes in some of our future videos here with the public project if you have the azure devops public project then there is a limitation that you can run the 10 number of parallel job whereas if you are using a free version then you can just use the single parallel job so for the public project and the self hosted agent there is no limit for the parallel job you can run unlimited parallel jobs so it's unlimited here you can find the billing information or purchase any additional agent pools right here from this particular link click here that will land to this particular option which is a billing under your devops organization and from this organization settings you can set up a billing and you can find the information what is the current scenario for the microsoft hosted agents so you can see that we have the 1800 minutes for my account available per month and then self hosted agent obviously i can just configure one as of now there is none configured so here is the documentation as i mentioned you could have mac os linux as an agent docker as an agent or windows machine as an agent which you can configure it with your machine about the agent pool or the self hosted agent one thing to mention here is uh, if you are using the microsoft hosted agent then all the software which you need it will be pre installed on those machines and whenever you run a pipeline you will get a fresh machine so let's say if i am running a ci cd pipeline for very first time i might get a machine number one which will have all this predefined software available then if i am running a second instance i'll get a machine xyz and then so and so on so a machine will be every time a fresh machine will be available to you and whenever a job finishes or your pipeline finishes whether it is succeed or fail that particular machine will be destroyed after every run so now that proves the point that if you are basically trying to deploy your own self hosted ma machine then in that vm you have to deploy all your or you have to install all the necessary software for example let's say if you are using a terraform then you need to install the Terraform. If you are using a .NET, then you need to install the .NET Core or .NET Framework first, or Node.js or whichever software your CI/CD pipelines are using or your automation deployments is using. You have to install those softwares your own. So you, Microsoft won't take any guarantee of that. And the availability of the pipelines or the availability of the parallel jobs will be your own responsibility because if you are running the self hosted agent then you have to make sure that those machines are available and connectable from the microsoft agent pool now one question is what is the use case for the self hosted agent and what is the use case for the self hosted agent and what is the use case for the microsoft hosted agent to understand that let's say we have the azure environment here and with that azure environment we have the storage service app services we have some database services we have the key vault everything is configured inside a vnet and your application is vnet protected and we have a clear instruction that all these services basically should not be accessible outside the virtual network boundary now, if we are going to use the Microsoft hosted agent, for example, the Microsoft hosted agent would be available uh, via a public IP address. It means that if our CI CD pipeline will be deploying or accessing, try to access these resources, these will not be 
able to access because the request is coming from the public IP address and we are not allowing any of these services to access via the public IP address. So in such cases, what you can do is you can configure a couple of virtual machines here as the agent, for example, agent one, VM one, VM two. And with that VM, we can configure as the self-hosted agent. Okay. And now when you run the self-hosted agent, because these are part of the same network or maybe hub and spoke network, then the request will, whenever a request will be coming from here, it will be successfully able to connect to your application component. So in most of your application projects, you would be able to use the, uh, you will find this kind of a configuration wherein they would like to have the self-hosted agent. That is the case number one. Now the case number two could be buying a multiple agents from the Microsoft Azure DevOps could be expensive because you have to pay for the cost for those agents and you it might possible you might not be using those agents for a long period of time. Let's say you might be just using for the office hours because when the team of development and testing are working, then only you are using the agents, but not the rest of the time. So instead of paying for those agents for the remaining of time or over the weekend, for example, why not we should create our own self-hosted agents into a Docker container, for example, or into a Kubernetes and then use the number of agent right from the Kubernetes via the CI CD pipeline. So Kubernetes will deploy the number of pods on demand and whenever there is no need for the on demand pod, it will destroy those pods basically. So that, that is going to be a, another use case when you want to have a self-hosted agent. Obviously, as I said, if you are using a self-hosted agent, you have to install all the software, configure the connectivity with your on-premise to your Azure virtual machine or, or to your Azure DevOps connectivity. You need to configure all the security and everything. You have to manage the entire connectivity and security aspect of your application. But in my understanding, that is pretty much simple. That's not a big deal. This is about the agent pools. What are the different types and how do you use it? I hope you have found this useful. You can go to this particular documentation. It is very useful and simple to understand. In our next video, we'll try to create a self-hosted agent, first of all, onto a virtual machine and then to a Kubernetes cluster, just to show you how do you use the self-hosted agents. I hope you have found this useful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.